something strangely hypnotic about watching the wet snow hit the windshield and watching it slide down the windshield. It's kind of like watching a fire, campfire. If you watch the sparks and the smoke and the glowing embers, it's very hypnotic. Just waiting for Hannah. She's at the dentist, so I've got some time to kill. So I thought I'd chat with you guys. Been wet, cold, snowy, rainy. We've had everything this week, so haven't been out in the bush filming at all. I am almost finished the My Bigfoot story. It is almost completely uploaded to Bigfoot or Gary. So thank God. I didn't realize what an undertaking that was going to be, guys, when we started that. I've literally been working five or six hours a week on that since July. You know, I'll upload 10 movies. It takes that long. I've got to make a new intro for them. I've got to type all the information back in and just very time consuming. So now I think uh, I've got 10 videos left to upload, 10 files left in that folder to upload, and then we're done. I'm deleting them as I do it. So they are gone off my computer. But very time consuming. And then now I've started doing that with the uh, metal detecting channel as well because I'm trying to get, you know, seven years of metal detecting uploaded onto its own channel so that people, when they go there, they know what they're getting. It's metal detecting only, right? Um, same premise as Bigfoot. You know what you're getting when you go to Bigfoot or Gary, and that's Bigfoot only. So that's why I did that. I've explained that many times. I think we, we've got to be close to 2,000 videos now on the channels, guys. It's kind of crazy. You, and, you know, I, I know splitting them the way I did is kind of hurting the channels because YouTube only wants to seem to promote bigger channels. The, For example, the Metal Detecting channel has just over 1,000, maybe 1,100 subs on there. And so I'm sure we get no love from YouTube, right? We're just another drop in the bucket of nothingness to them, right? They're not going to promote us. We're not making them millions of dollars. And even on Frequented World, which has 30,000 subscribers or thereabouts, again, just a teeny tiny drop in the bucket to them. So they don't really care about promoting our, when we put up a new video on the YouTube homepage, right? They've got thousands or tens of thousands of guys that they put up a video and they get, you know, a million views in a day kind of thing, right? I'm not doing makeup and cosmetic tips, guys. Sorry. There's some creative filming right there. We switched arms. So, um, you know, winter is still here in full force. Snowing again. We're supposed to get another probably seven, eight inches today. So I've got to go home and plow. And again, that's just uh, adding time on to how long it's going to take before we can get back out in the woods metal detecting. And I am so stoked looking forward to it. Stan sent me a link. I think there's a new update for the legend. And uh, to be honest with you guys, I don't feel I got enough hours on the legend last year to really test it and learn. I mean, there's so much to learn with these machines. Uh, I'm a, you guys know that I'm a kind of a scientific formulaic guy, right? I'll take what I know about this machine and apply it to this machine. Then we'll compare them, we'll test them. And I have to have a baseline. I can't just take a machine out and use it and say, oh, it's great. It's better than my Equinox, right? And lots of guys, lots of channels do that. You won't see me do that because they're both great machines and they both do different things, have different settings, and you can set your machine up a hundred different ways. So, but what I like to do is try to set them up in the same mode and then do a comparative test. Do we have a definitive winner? You know, and I mean, they're both great machines. And I'm, you know, again, I'm always thinking about buying something new too. I'm kind of mad at my lab. Because, again, we get no love, guys. We got no notification that they were coming out with an Equinox 700 and 900. Um, of course, they came out with the Manicore last year. And I wasn't going to drop two grand on a new detector. But the package that I got for the, the Legend, um, the Nocta Macro Legend, 900 bucks, And it came with two coils, all kinds of extra digging equipment, pouches, two hats... Uh, all kinds of stuff, guys. And it was a fantastic deal for what, what you got. Um, my Equinox 600, I paid $900 just for the one machine. And then I had to buy 
a second coil, a six inch coil, a new shaft and some extra stuff, um, headsets for the MindLab 600. That is the one thing I literally spent $200, guys, trying to find a Bluetooth headset that would connect and work. And to this day, that machine still gives me issues. And the only thing that works is a cheap $14 headset that I've had for six or seven years that I bought on Amazon. I call it my Princess Leia headset. You guys have seen it. It's got like two black pieces that stick way out on each side, right? They look like Princess Leia head buns. Um, but that headset connects instantly to Equinox. I bought Bluetooth 5, Bluetooth 4, Bluetooth 4.1, 0.2, blah, 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 on and on and on. I've tried, you know, $80 Aki's, um, $40, numerous sets I tried in the $40 to $50 range. Nothing wants to work with that mine lab. So I hope that the 700 and 900 have better Bluetooth modules in them. I don't know, but do I see one of those new, new machines? In my future, I don't think so. Uh, I think we're going to spend this summer learning the legend and maxing out the legend. I think we need to do another spirit box session uh, this week, end of the week or weekend coming up here, because I mentioned to you guys that um, my dad's friend that he was staying with was terminally ill, and that unexpectedly his brother died a couple days ago, three days ago. And then yesterday, my dad's friend that he was staying with, he passed away as well. So uh, their sister, Laura, is very good friends of my family, their whole family. I mean, we grew up, my parents grew up together right in a small town, and they were all very close friends from the time they were in kindergarten together and on. And um, so Laura lost two brothers this week, and I want to do a spirit box session you know, and that, that's tough to do, guys, because honestly, I don't take that lightly. I take it seriously. I believe in it. I wouldn't do this just for entertainment purposes. I want to see, can we communicate with dead folks on the other side? When you pass away, you know, if there's ever a chance that you could say something, give us a message. I, I'm open to that. Maybe that's all they need as a conduit. Somebody just to look for answers and ask them, hey, can you send us a message? And I'm willing to be that guy and do it. But if these apps that we're using, Necrophonic and HackShack, and I was thinking about buying the Spirit, Spig Spirit Signal app, you know, and if these apps are really just spitting out random answers and things are come up, coming up and making sense only out of coincidence, I, I don't know, guys. I get the, I honestly get the gut feeling there's more to it. Right? Too many things line up and make sense when I ask a question, but it's never clear. Right, A lot of it is up to interpretation from the listener. A lot of you guys don't hear what I hear. And I mean, I've had really good headsets in the past. I bought a new gaming headset, which is top of the line, very expensive, has some of the best sound I've ever heard because it's made for gaming where you're listening for other guys sneaking up on you, going to shoot you and it's directional and everything like that, but very clear sound. And I already know, I, I watched a couple of my spirit box sessions back and I tried to listen again. I can even hear more stuff in the background guys, um, because these settings that we're putting the spirit box on are usually uh, an echo. Uh, we put it on repeat and it kind of echoes because if you don't eclipse the words, and it's very hard to hear what they're saying. But the echo is also hard to hear because it's still echoing out and they'll start to say something else over top of it. So it's words over top of words over top of words sometimes. But I honestly believe there is more to that. You guys know I do. I th But I just, I can't prove it. And I want, I want one of these two brothers to come through and tell us something. You know, give us a message that I can 100% say that is not a freaking coincidence. Also, we're going to be getting out to do some last of winter photography. I've just got the photography bug. I drove down to Toronto four hours on the highway the other day, and it was a beautiful, cold, misty morning. And I, if I had had a camera with me, I could have stopped at a dozen places, guys. There was just some beautiful scenes that I would have loved to capture, and I didn't get the chance to do it. So the photography bug is always in me, and I'm feeling that creativity bubble up for photography right now. So in the next week, I'd like to get out and do some shooting as well, maybe do a road trip. 
what I'd like to do is maybe start a series this summer, uh, road trip and photography, and where I set out to go to a certain place, and I'll just show you guys the beautiful stops along the way, scenery and things that people take for granted. They drive along the highway, they drive right by these places, right? We have tons of rest areas, picnic stops, waterfalls up here, uh, beautiful places to stop and pull over and rest, and some of them, they're, they're usually built on places with water so that people could swim back in the day or a waterfall or something nice to stop and enjoy and check out while you were having your rest, right? So maybe we should call it rest stop adventures. I don't know. We could also metal detect them because a lot of them were put in in the 1930s, 40s, 50s. Those should have silver coins. So I'm always thinking, right? And that's maybe a new series there. It's kind of taken me a lifetime to figure out. I think I'm susceptible to other people's energy. I've never really, you know, before this year thought about it in, in those terms. Um, but I think I am. Not only, you know, do I feel the spirituality and, you know, the other side. I think people can bring me down. And there's certain people I love hanging out with because I love their energy. It's like I can sense it. I can feel it. I build on it. I have fun. You know, Tom, I have fun with Tom all the time. He's never down, that guy. I love Tom. He's great to hang out with and do stuff. Um, then there's other people who are, they just suck every ounce of energy from me and I just feel drained when I'm done hanging out with them. And uh, I'm really making choices moving forward that uh, to limit my exposure to that, to try to concentrate on other people's energies and the vibe I get and the feeling I get. And it's all about shared experience and having fun. And for me, it's about being uplifted and sharing that with people who who want to share that enjoyment of life, right? Um, I mean, everybody has a day where you're down and, you know, can be a little negative. But when it's every second of every day, I'm just not going to... I'm just not going to subject myself to that torture. I'm going to limit my exposure to those folks because it really does bring me down. And I do feel that I am 95% of the time pretty positive, upbeat, happy, adventuring, ready to do anything kind of guy. Just if you put me with that wrong set of people and I'm there for, you know, three, four days in a row, oh, it takes a toll on me. I think intuitively people know that already, right? It's just not something you think about. And there are ways that we deal with that. We put up a wall. We put up a barrier when you're around people like that to stop the energy drain, right? But that closes us off. And I spent years like that where I didn't want to associate. I didn't want to put myself out there. I didn't want to, you know, I just did the bare minimum to get by. Go to work every day. Don't do more than you have to. Just kind of hide in the wings. That's not the point of life. And I don't want to do that anymore. I want to put myself out there. And, you know, when there is negativity, um, I'm just not going to interact with it. And I just don't, I don't even want to acknowledge it because it's a choice that people are making, right? And you're not going to change somebody who is negative like that. It's not going to happen. I've learned that, right? No matter how upbeat you are, they will suck your energy and bring you down to their level. You will never bring that negative low person up to your high level. They will just take, 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 take your energy and you will eventually run out of energy. You know, you can't fight it myself. So for me, what I do is I just have to limit my exposure to that. And I, you put up a little bit of a barrier there. You just don't give in to it. You don't associate, you know. Um, and I have a couple family members that are like that too. So it's, you just have to limit your exposure. I gotta say, chatting with you guys makes the time fly. You know, I'm sitting here for 45 minutes waiting for Hannah. And uh, this is much better than just sitting here watching the snowflakes hit the windshield. <laughs> So I just wanted to give you guys a midweek update and also a commitment. You know, I'm going to lock myself in for at least this next season. We're going to continue making videos. We're going to continue doing metal detecting. Guys, I'm, I'm so looking forward to all the outdoor adventures that we can do. And I have like a list of 100 ideas of places to go, 
things to check out. So I have lots of, ven of adventuring left that I want to do and that I want to share. And I'm really hoping to get Doug on board and do some paranormal stuff this summer as well. So if all that pans out, guys, you're going to get another full season on all three channels. Okay, we're going to do some Bigfoot stuff, metal detecting stuff, paranormal, and outdoor adventure stuff. So all three channels will have videos coming at least until uh, next December because I'm going to do a hunting series on here as well. My dad and I, I don't know how many more years he's going to hunt. So, And a lot of you guys do enjoy that series, so I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm going to make the commitment right now to you guys to do one more year. All right, so I've got to go pay for Hannah, and then I've got to go home and plow the driveway, and then I've got to go to the office for four hours. So I will catch you guys later on this week, and we are going to do some kind of adventuring, whether it's photography, spirit boxing. Definitely want to do the spirit box this week, because those two guys just passed away, and um, I just feel, you know, hey, if you wanted to get one last message out, now's the time to do it. Huh. I just licked my lip right there, and I realized my beard has honey in it. I had toast and honey this morning like four hours ago. <laughs>